it yeah. fits it. Now I'm getting with it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so now that I have your attention, today I have some of my friends who have founded their own political technology startup. Is that what you guys consider it? I guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and today we just want to talk about the role of technology in politics and how you guys actually got your startup up off the ground. You want to just give us an introduction? Yeah. So I'm Vikram. Uh, I'm the CTO of Pundit. I'm Glenn. I'm the CEO of Pundit. I'm Rachel. I'm the CPO of Pundit. What do you guys do? <laughs> so Pundit Analytics is a platform that automates competitive intelligence for political campaigns. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. intelligence for political campaigns. So yeah. like, what is like a kind of use case for this product? So for example, if a presidential candidate makes a change on his or her website, um, our clients will want to know that because that's oh, very important okay. intelligence. Or if there's a tweet going out from a presidential campaign that's getting a lot of traction, we know all of that. And we let our clients know. <laughs> we know everything. Yeah. <laughs> and we let our clients know in real time so they right. can take that intel and take action on it. Right. I see. Okay. That's a pretty, uh, very scary time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Alan, to your vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did you guys decide on this specific use case? Did it start off as an intelligence product or t intelligence tool? Um, so we actually started as students at UC Berkeley. I created a political computer science club and these people were some of the first, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> were the first uh, members of that club. And we started to build um, kind of a separate project within that club focusing on politics and tech, that intersection. Mm. We ended up really getting along very well, had a lot of the same interests aligned. Um, and so we kind of branched off to start Pundit, which was really focused on political tech. Mm. So from there, um, we decided to make like a political Wikipedia website. And that was really interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, it was really great to kind of get our feet wet, figure out, is there a need in this space? Is, is this space really viable? Um, and then over time, we did, uh, iterated upon it to become a political social network where mm. people could talk about politics. We saw a lot of people disenfranchise on other political, so, uh, other social networks that I will not name. But we know <laughs> we're talking about the other social networks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are many of them out no there. No shade, no tea. Yeah. <laughs> no shade. <laughs> All uh, right. So you went from kind of like a Wikipedia type of thing for politics. Yes. Uh, yeah. The technical term for yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. to more of a social network. So Definitely. that's see, it sounds subtle, but it was probably a big switch. Why did you switch like that? Um, one major reason was uh, the financial viability of... It's more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and it definitely has to do with how scalable the product can be. Um, kind of goes back to the, the difference between being a publisher versus a platform. Being a publisher, a company that's a publisher, typically isn't able to scale to as much an extent as a platform like Facebook, for example which is able to have more of a bottom-up approach, yeah. scale to you know millions of people yeah. in just a few days, that kind of thing. Right. So we kind of weighed those differences and realized we want people to be able to discuss politics on our platform as opposed to maybe shoving something down their throat. Yeah. We don't world. want to be the source of information. We want people to be able to disseminate that information to each other. Oh, yeah. okay, right. yeah. gotcha. So then how did you go from this platform just for information to the actual like intelligence functionality you guys <laughs> provide now? Yeah. Um, so we worked on the, the political social network for the better half of, of 2019, mm -hmm. and that was really awesome. We got a lot of like, great traction, great a uh, lot of debate watch party. Yeah, yeah. users yeah. really liked okay. it. Yeah, trackers. yeah. There yeah. was the that explosion, <laughs> uh, literally an explosion at our debate watch. Uh, long yeah. story short. <laughs> but, uh, so after just a few months ago, we ended up linking up with a top member of a a political organization, and he said, "Hey." could you apply the technology that you guys are using in your political social network for a kind of a different, more niche use case, which mm. was competitive intelligence. Right. And so we contemplated it. We're like, okay, let's check this out. Yeah. And so, it ends up being viable for us. Yeah. So we went to oh, DC yeah. and uh, we talked to a lot of the campaigns uh, out through that political organization <laughs> and we figured out a lot of their pain points and kind of deciphered what they really needed in terms of like their upgrading their tech stack. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. the people that reached out to you high up there on the, you know, political mm -hmm. hierarchy, basically, yes. yeah. they were mainly interested in the technology you were using rather than your use case at the moment. Yes, yes. Exactly. exactly. So, mm -hmm. so yes. what was your tech stack like? Um, we can go pretty granular, I guess. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Google Cloud, primarily Firebase to handle like authentication, 
Firebase has a great database infrastructure. It's very quick, it's very easy to use. And we were able to partner with Google actually to become like a Google Cloud startup. So they were able to support us in a lot of ways. Yeah. The Google Cloud infrastructure, I sound like I'm like an ambassador <laughs> for Google Cloud. They're, they're, they're great, but um, they're just the cloud service. They've made it really easy to integrate a lot of different third-party services that we rely on. Gotcha. Yeah. So did you start off using Google Cloud in the way that you are now? Or how did it actually start? <laughs> I will admit, I <laughs> okay. did not start off. Um, when I first started working on Pundit, just uh, up the street at a coffee shop, Romeo's. Um, Love it. We were not using, tech stack was just like not even in my vocabulary. <laughs> I was just like, how, like, what is HTML? What is like, CSS? Yeah, what is, yeah, like, what are components? Um, yeah, literally and, a GoDaddy website. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our entire, all of our like secret credentials are stored on the client side, which means that anyone could have hacked our stuff. I'm surprised we're not in a lot of debt right now. <laughs> Start off as like pundit.github die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Yeah. We're kind of a deer in headlights when it came to technical <laughs> components. Um, you know, they don't teach you the stuff in classes. Like, no, no. if you're going to start a company, use this tech stack. Yeah. Um, so it was a lot of trial and trial and trial and error and error and error. Lots of errors. Yeah. Right. Like what? Like what? Uh... For example, um, having our secret credentials exposed on our client side of our website, which mm, means yeah, that don't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which means that yeah. literally we are liable and exposed to like so many vulnerabilities. Definitely a learning experience from right. that. All right. If investors are watching, that's not. Yeah, the that's yeah, we yeah. That. that was before. <laughs> that was before. Okay. So do you start off? You start off using Firebase. Or we started off using um, like GoDaddy. Go Daddy. Go Daddy. Yeah. 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 Go Daddy. So you did everything, everything client side. You just did a bunch of API yeah. calls from the client side. Yeah. Exactly. Not not very scalable. No, not, not, scalable. At all. not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What was really I think hard for us to do, or I think hard for any founder to do from a technical standpoint, is to be forward looking in your tech stack because maybe it fits all your solutions at the moment, mm -hmm. but if you ever want to integrate a new feature, it's like well you don't want to restart <laughs> your entire tech yeah. stack. Yeah, exactly. So being able to have that ability to be like, okay, maybe this will be a little complicated in the short run, but the in long run, yeah, it'll long really run, simplify better. things. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So then what prompted this switch to Google Cloud? Well, we began to realize um, a lot of the new features we wanted to introduce, for example, allowing people to create accounts, obviously political information associated with a human is very sensitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can imagine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure it's encrypted and secure. So we were like, okay, we want authentication, but then we also want databases that are easy to use, easy to integrate real time. Mm -hmm. So we we're looking at a solution that fit all of these kind of requirements that we had. And Google Cloud actually came across um, as the best solution for us. And Firebase, which is what we typically use, is layered right on top Above of it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so you went from political publishing platform or publishing service to a social media to now a tool for gathering intelligence in campaigns specifically. Yeah. So why did you feel that this use case was really important? Yeah. So I think um, a lot of this, uh, a lot of work in this space is done completely manually. It's staffers looking through all of these different data points, all these websites, all these different things that could be really easily automated. And there was no platform that was doing it for them so that just one person can look down and see only the important things they need to. Right. So we're saving campaigns a lot of time by doing this. And this was a really nice. unaddressed need in politics right now. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like an example would be uh, right now, like staffers would manually like look at the website of the campaign's opponent and see if there are any changes, which is just kind of tedious when you know that there's technology that can be made to automate that. Oh, that's that's interesting. So like checking live website updates for like an opponent's yes. like, campaign right. website. Exactly. So how is that actually done? Like, is there anything specifically hard about that? You mentioned that there's like some semantic parsing component to it. Mm -hmm. yep. Did you guys build that from scratch? like a domain specific semantic parser. Yeah, it's definitely integrating a lot of tools that are presently out there. Right, right. Um, so it's like you mentioned crawling tens of thousands of websites every minute looking for mm -hmm. any updates. Um, the difficult thing for us has been kind of sifting through all the noise that comes with that because there's always going to be little website changes yeah, here and there. In there. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, but for us it's making sure that we can provide the website changes that matter, that mm -hmm. are critical intel that could make a difference to our, one of our clients. 
that's been the integration of AI that's been critical and just like kind of sifting through all of that. Gotcha. So that sounds really cool. So on a more broad, like industry wide level, why do you feel that politics has so much room for technology? Like why has this not happened before? Yeah. So over the past decade, um, over the past few election cycles, there's just been like an exponential increase in campaign expenditures, which means there's a lot more money in politics than there was like a decade ago. So what that means is um, creating a tech company in the political space is a lot more viable than it was a decade ago. And that means that companies like our, our company, Punda Analytics, we can go into the space and know that we're not going to be shut out after the election next year. Yeah. It's a continual cycle that will right. continue to be sustainable. So basically, it's more viable now for a startup to even exist doing this right. type of a thing because there's more money spent on campaigns and that just wasn't happening before. Right. But what is your personal motivation for going into this thing and solving this kind of a problem? Like, why is this a problem that needs to be solved? I think um, what we're doing has to do a lot with lowering the barrier of entry for campaigns. Right, right now, um, one thing that technology does really well is drive down the cost of something. And if we can drive down the cost of things like this, it really gives people who don't have as much financial backing, don't have as many connections, more of a chance to stay competitive in campaigns and political, yes. in elections. And we really want to bring te bring tech that aspect of technology into politics to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. And on a more like broad, like level, I'd say that the political industry is pretty outdated. To give an no. example, um, we've spoken to some politicians to ask them how constituents contact them, and they've said postcards is one of the yeah, most common literally. way that they're yeah. in contact. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy to think that in like 2019, or just like the 21st century in general, that that's the norm. Yeah. Um, so I think all of us um, saw the potential for technology to really kind of um, revolutionize the space, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, And I think also, um, not only is it from the outside looking in the tech industry interested in politics, but now politicians are a lot more open to integrating mm. tech, which is the most important thing because yeah. they have to be the ones to take initiative to allow us to come in. So I think they're, for some reason, I don't know why, but they've taken a lot more initiative over the past two years, pr pretty much ever since 2016, yeah. to integrate different alternative services to expedite processes gotcha. yeah, and we're all i think personally interested in politics as yes well. right yeah right. we all take poli sci classes we were poli sci majors at one point yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, it's yeah. really and really now you're in space. founders <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. 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 i mean that must be pretty cool right being like college age and like having your own company like what's that like what's the what was the experience like for you guys sorry i just bumped you right there <laughs> <laughs> um it's definitely been a double-edged sword yeah. <laughs> it's you know I, i'm yeah. so grateful i'm not gonna say what was me the people, the opportunities that we've had, like amazing. It's I couldn't have even imagined this growing up that we would have been here at this point. Um, there definitely have been some drawbacks. There's yeah. not as much stability mm -hmm. as yeah. um, I would like. There's also just a constant exposure to everyone that I know. Everyone knows exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> what my job is. Right, right. Um, so that you know, in a social setting, that can be a little bit awkward. Right. But I'm I'm glad I have these two people to. Uh, that's true. Yeah. 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 And I think one thing that really helped was the fact that Cal is such a is really supports. There's a really supportive entrepreneurial like ecosystem here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Berkeley Sky Deck has I think has really helped us out. Sybil yeah. Chen. Yeah. Sybil yeah. Chen Sybil. has yeah. saved our company yes. many times. Uh, yeah, and just having that infrastructure for students to really explore an idea and kind of elevate them is humongous. I think we wouldn't be where we are without them. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's been such a wild ride. Like, I think we all, like, know that we didn't imagine ourselves being where we are now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, like, meeting, like, the all these people, like, in our journey and yeah. what they, all the advice that they have for us has just been extremely helpful and, yeah. like, be having ownership of our own product, everything yeah. has just been very eye-opening. I mean, these guys aren't even 21 years old yet. We're having <laughs> meetings, we're going to happy hours with like billionaires and you know very high-level government officials. So it's like, it's it's surreal. It's yeah, surreal. Me, yeah, meanwhile, I'm just here like, hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nah. You're not so to wrap this up, do you guys have any yeah. advice for college students who want to get into the startup space or be founders? follow your Rachel, right? uh, Rachel, you want to go first? Um, I guess with a lot of things, like you have to believe in yourself and if you want to do something, then put in the work and do mm, it instead period. of just talking That's about good. it That's all good. the Bars. time yeah. and <laughs> never really taking action. Like, yeah. It's better to like fail fast than to kind of be cautious yes. and like thinking that you're not going to do that perfect first step. 
So yeah. I think the biggest thing is getting started and telling yourself, stop talking about it and start doing something about it. Yeah. You just have to sit down and write code. Yeah. <laughs> Get that GoDaddy website out. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and then upgrade from there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for yeah. sitting down with me today. Uh, hopefully you find this valuable. Make sure to hit the... Oh my gosh, I hit hate that. Like, yeah, yeah. Subscribe, like, like, comment, <laughs> notification bell. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. All right, peace. I'm going to make other people start doing that intro because I'm getting tired of the outro. All right, cool.